Hi, welcome back to my shop. Today we're actually outside under the uh, carport. We're going to do uh, a brake job. We've got a 2011 Chevy Suburban XLT four-wheel drive and the brakes seem a little wonky. So I think it's uh, it's got about 65,000 miles on it. it. still has the original brake pads so we're going to replace the brake pads. See if that helps. All right, stay tuned. Okay, to start out with, you see that you got these two spots here where you can stick a pry bar or something. We're just going to use a screwdriver and you just pop this cover off. It does only go on one way. Pay attention to, uh, you have this little part that sticks out here. So we pop that off <coughs> and you're going to use, uh, you know, your standard um, cross pattern lug nut wrench and this is a 7 8 uh, socket. Alright we got her jacked up in the air enough and we just need to go ahead and take the rest of these all the way off. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a 19 millimeter socket on the end of a breaker bar and we're going to use that to uh, loosen these two nuts. <clears throat> and if you don't happen to have a 19 millimeter open end wrench, a 3 quarter inch uh, wrench will do just as good. So we're going to stick a 3 quarter inch wrench in here. and one thing to remember is lefty loosey righty tidy. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but if you don't, you'll end up stripping out. Um, you'll end up stripping out one of these bolts. I speak from experience. that easy you get the bolt out set that to the side and we go to the next one Let's see if I need to break the breaker bar on this one here oh well I guess maybe I should have loosened that before put that back in a little bit and start working this one yep all right now we got it So you take the two 19 millimeter bolts out and then you should be able to pull the caliper back off. Uh, careful with the hose, just try and set it out of the way. Careful not to knock that. Alright, so now we just need to get our brake pads out and inspect them. I mean, they don't look awful. I am not really sure. There is a groove in this one here. I'm sure that's in that there. Yeah, there's several grooves in the back one here. You can see there looks like there are a number of grooves here, a groove there. These rotors, I'm sure, probably need to be turned. The, the back pads, and maybe that's just normal, the back pads seem to be on both sides. They've worn down quite a bit more than the, than the front. Now, the other thing that I'm doing, I don't know that it's probably good, bad, or indifferent, but I'm doing it anyway. There is this kind of ridge here, but 
it is kind of rusty, <laughs> loose metal. So I'm just hitting it with a hammer here and breaking that off. I think that, to me, I think that's better to get that loose, loose crap off of there. So that's what I'm going to do. The brake pads we're uh, putting on today are uh, Duralast Gold. They are a ceramic brake pad. I can't tell you, because I'm not a mechanic of any kind, what kind of brake pads these were that, that came on it. Uh, but this is what they look like. Uh, you know, in comparison, you can see they're they're quite a bit quite a bit thicker. Uh, the way you tell which one is which is the one that's square uh, is the one that goes on the back and the other way that kind of gives away is you see these two compression uh, areas uh, where the brake cylinder comes out and pushes on the, the caliper. <clears throat> so the back one goes in first. Well, I guess you can put either one in for in whatever order you want. We're going to put that one in first. <clears throat> They just pop right in. There's not a whole heck of a lot to it. They just kind of pop in. Now, if you were replacing the rotors, you got to take this off. You use a hex, uh, not a hex, but a star there to, to pop these off. I thought about the rotors, but I just didn't have the money this time to, to buy all new rotors for the vehicle. So I thought I'll try the brake pads and see how that goes. Next time I can replace the rotors as well. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this ceramic glide high performance brake lubricant. Uh, the guy at AutoZone threw it in for free. He said it was on the house. I thanked him for that. <laughs> it wasn't real expensive. I think it was like a buck, buck 40 or something like that. Um, but everything I've seen you just kind of helps with the squeaking brakes or something I don't know vibrate something to do with vibrations or whatever but you just kind of put that on there front and rear okay now the next step that we have to do is we have to compress the the brake cylinder back into its housing so, if you can see, this is sticking out and it, that won't fit, obviously on the, it won't fit like that on our, um, on our new brake pads because they're thicker. So, we're going to use a, a C-clamp. So I'm just going to use the old brake pad here to... Uh, Press against so that they don't come together. Isn't that way too much? Right. Let's see if that compressed enough here. So, as you can see, they're not poking out anymore. Nineteen millimeter screws. Hand 
fact, no, not for right this minute, then we'll get there. Okay, now we're gonna get our... Core branch. We are going to set it to... Not just all the shots that come that far. Snugging them up right here, nothing tight. We're just kind of, I'm just using this thing here to help me spin it so I don't have to sit there and turn, turn, turn so many times. And once it just snugs up, once we get them all snugged up there, then we'll drop it down and then we'll, we'll uh, torque them. You need to have it like this, like this here. Looks like that, that's saying it's done, that's good. Okay, that's pretty much it, basically. Uh, that's a rinse and repeat. Once you've got one done, they're all pretty much the same way. Um, Obviously the backs, the rear brakes are, are going to be a little bit more difficult, I imagine, just from the standpoint of you can't turn the wheels to, to give yourself more access in the back there. Uh, but other than that, I think it should be about the same. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Hey, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. This used to be the funnest part. Every year, at winter, around winter time, we had we had winter tires where we where I grew up every winter you you changed out your regular regular tires for winter tires and they all, grandpa always stored them in the shed he always had them in the corner of the shed they were stacked up and every fall this was a chore that we did 
we came out, we jacked up, we jacked up, we took the tires off, and then the funnest part was rolling them from the garage back to the shed. 